morning from Glastonbury where it's a beautiful clear day with blue skies and the feeling that all is well. Oh. Peace. How do we find peace? Well, one kind of peace we find when the hostilities of war stop. Another kind of peace we find when noise finishes. But that isn't the real peace. The real peace doesn't even come and go. It's always there where it is. Undisturbable. Peace of mind is when you're quiet. Peace of mind is when you accept everything as it is about the past, about your psychological self, about others. Just for a moment, accept it as it is. And in that acceptance, becomes possible to be free from all of that. Except that you don't know what's going on. Except that opinions aren't really that important. Except that thinking isn't all that. When you asked your mind, who am I, over the years, from about seven years on, seven years old onwards, it probably came up with a spectrum of answers that ranges from, hey, you're really special, for some reason, down to, you're not good enough and there's something wrong. There's something wrong with you. You haven't got all the software. Is that who you are? Who you think you are? Or is it actually the source of your discomfort? When you think outrageously positively about yourself, how special you are, who hears those thoughts? They must be heard, heard or you wouldn't know you had them. And when you think, oh, I'm not good enough, you know, I'll never this, I'll never that, oh, something's wrong, oh dear, the past. Who hears those thoughts? Again, you wouldn't know you were having them unless they were heard. So there's your thinking and that which witnesses it. We put all our attention onto what we're thinking all the time chattering away to ourselves thinking I am the thinker not realizing that there's something more subtle than that that is witnessing you think let's look at that one the witness of your thinking is it more or less subtle than you're thinking. 
it's more subtle. The witness of your thinking, is it affected by what you think? The witness of your thinking, is it affected by what you think? No, it's not. It witnesses negativity just as it witnesses positivity and makes no judgment and remains impartial. Just witnesses. This witness of your thinking, has it changed over the years? Is it different today than it was yesterday? Is it different today than it was when you were ten years old? The witness of your thinking. Your thoughts have definitely changed. But has the witness of them changed? Your thoughts, the quality of your thoughts, the subject matter of your thoughts perhaps has evolved and got more sophisticated as your intellect grows. grows. But the witness of them has that changed? Has that evolved? No, it hasn't. The key to peace, is to recognize what is witnessing. Not just your thoughts, but what is witnessing your consciousness states as well? What witnesses, what registers if you're happy? What, what witnesses if you're high? What witnesses when you have a low mood? How do you know that? How do you know you're high? How do you know you're in a low state of consciousness? Because again, it's witnessed. Does the witness become happy when you are high? No. Does the witness go under when you are depressed? No. It remains absolutely stable always. Peace comes from witnessing the witness attending to attention distinguishing the sky if you like from the weather the more that happens the more intense the recognition of peace becomes until what you're witnessing and the witness are the same. Like two mirrors facing each other. So much stress comes from maintaining this idea we have of ourselves. Oh, this is who I am. I'm this. I'm good at this. I think that. I've got this much of this. I've got this much of that. And this is who I am. I do this. I do that. And people think of me like this. And people think of me like that. And this is who I am. What happens if we just put all of that down for a moment? Would we still be if we took off our personality, if we took off our character, if we put down the persona for a moment, would we still be? And of course we would. 
what would we be without the support of endless internal chatter? If we just let everything completely be, what is the most subtle thing about us? Well, we know there's something more subtle than thinking. Something more subtle than our changing states of consciousness. Something more subtle than space. Can we return into that? Can we surrender to that? Can we become one with that? As we approach that even, peace comes. We realize the level of peace. And then peace is always with us. Any time we choose peace, it's there. A vast, shoreless ocean. As soon as we choose peace, we stop being distracted by thinking and realize that the thoughts flow through profound peace. But our attention is on the noise and not on the peace. But we can change that with a wish. I choose peace. And here it is. The presence of the self. The presence of the unchanging self that you are. The presence of the self. Who are you? I am that. And that really is the great treasure. That really is the great wealth. That really is the prize that lasts forever. When we open up to this joy of the self, the ramifications of that are unending and all good. It even comes to be seen that actually this is why we came in a human body. People look for the purpose of life. Perhaps the purpose of life is to realize who we truly are and what it means to have a human life and what life is and what life is for and perhaps a confusion and the horror and the craziness of the human society is simply caused by 
we don't know who we are. We haven't found this treasure within. So we're seeking it where it can't be found. Where it could never be found. And perhaps at this time, we can hope that as a species, there is a great turning happening, turning within to access the limitless wealth, the great treasure, the supreme prize of the self. the observer, the witness, the simple self, the simple sense I am, to rest there is a great meditation, the simple sense I am. You are the one watching yourself thinking. Your thoughts arise of their own accord, spontaneously given by who you're being in any one moment. And when you become still, you can see that and know that clearly and confirm that by your own experience believing something believing in the self understanding about the self will not do it it's not enough believing won't do it who cares what you believe It's a mental function. It will not access you to the self. Even understanding the realizations of those that have that are the self consciously is not enough. But the good news is that you are the self already. Put everything else down, put all your understanding, put all your beliefs down for a moment. All your beliefs about everything, all your understandings about everything, just put them down. And what remains, what can't be put down is the witness, is the observer, is the listener, is the one who your senses report to, the unchanging self within. Coming into this view is what constitutes awakening. This is the great awakening. Accept no substitute. You can realize what you understood. You can realize what you believe. So many people believing so intently. Some people believing that, it, that if you believe strongly enough, it'll make what you believe true. But it won't. When resting in that simple place of your I am presence, there's nothing to believe. There's no concept required to support it. It is self-evident what it is. It's peace. It's home. It's the place where you're complete. 
and untarnished by anything that's ever happened. Real meditation is happening all the time. All the time. The natural state. Your natural state. When you put everything down, there it is. Awakeness. Bringing your consciousness out of your mind, out of this world, and focusing it into awakeness. And your awakeness increases until the wonder and the luminosity and the deep peace becomes all there is. Nothing changes, and everything changes. The recognition of the self has been in the embrace of religion. But it doesn't belong to religion. It's entirely possible to realize the self in a completely non-religious context. Ontology, the study of being. If you feel your being, you will realize. Realize peace, realize clarity, realize the truth with a capital T, the unchanging truth that is not subject to opinion or belief. How wonderful, how wonderful is that? Dreaming, when you're dreaming that you're awake, you think you are the part you play. Oh, I'm a dad, I'm a male, I'm a Scorpio, I'm a do this job, I hold these beliefs, this is who I am. But it isn't. That's dreaming your awake. When that awakening comes through distinguishing the self, then you're awake dreaming. You recognize this life kind of like a dream. And more and more you see what doesn't change. that profound, undisturbable peace that passes all understanding. So rest is that. And more and more you find it easier and easier to put down who you're not. Your thinking is part of the part you're playing. It's not a, you can put that down. It's not that relevant when you come in the search for truth. It's a feeling. It's an experience. It's a knowing. It doesn't have to be translated into thought. You're complete, you lack nothing in this regard. In the part you play, you may have lack, you may have abundance, but who you are outside of the part you play beneath the part you play. The true self lacks nothing. Your true self lacks nothing.
find this place that I'm pointing to. Rest as that. Be healed by that which you are. Become wise by opening yourself to what is. You don't have to decide what is. What is, is. Whether you believe it or you don't believe it. Whether you accept it or you don't accept it. It's there. Always. Already. And in this place, all is well. All is well. This is the true refuge. This is the true place of the heart. And there, all is well. And you are whole. And you are presence. I wish you a great day. I also do life readings on a donation basis and if you're interested in having one of those online PM me and we can arrange that so unless you have any questions or comments which you can put in the box and say hello Don't let circumstances drive your experience of life. Right now, there's all kinds of drama and reasons to be anxious and the unknown futures. Nobody knows who to trust who, and what can be trusted, conflicting rumors, and all kinds of stuff. And that can make us anxious and close our hearts. We need to soften our hearts and have our life experience driven from within, not from without. It really doesn't matter. What's important is that you are where you are, where you truly are, and come into life from there, from that clarity, from that peace, from that love. And you'll find that your pathway then is golden, no matter what is happening. I will be back tomorrow. I hope to see you then.